thanks for joining me tonight. And I'm going to just go over some scrap refining and what, what kind of metals are used and how we process it. And it all come together at the end. And hopefully uh, you'll, you'll pick up a few things along the way. But I just want to tell you, we touched a little bit on what uh, about me. I started with a company called Jelanco. And if there's any doctors that have been a doctor for 20 or 30 years, you do remember Jelanco. Back in 1976, uh, mixing chemicals. I don't even know if they use the chemicals anymore. We used to use back then uh, dicep wax pattern and all kinds of stuff like that. And in 79, I became the assayer because I don't know if you remember, probably not. In 1980, the price of gold hit $850. So we were getting a ton of scrap in back then. And I became the assayer. And as I go through my presentation toward the end, uh, I'll explain how it's very important uh, what the assayer does. The assayer is the person that uh, takes the sample that's drawn from the lot and it's assayed and it tells you how much precious metal is in your lot. So that's a very important part of it. And I've, you know, I've done burning, I've done melting, I've done everything in the process of scrap refining. So I, I, I know how to do it all along the way, which also helps when you're trying to troubleshoot or explain to, to people what, what you're doing. Uh, became a scrap buyer in 1981, and that's just a person who accepts the material, assigns it a lot number, and puts it out to production. And then along the way, Piraeus purchased Jelanco back in 1996, and I become the uh, I was the director of refining since '93. So I've been in refining for a long, long time, and in, uh, in the scrap process. So let's, let's talk about the gold price. Everybody loves talking about the gold price. And every day you wake up, today's London close, to you, today, you know, today's New York spot price. But as you see, back when I started in 1976 and well before that, the price of gold really didn't change. I mean, it, it stayed around $35, $50 all along the way. And like I said, in 1980, it hit uh, 850 for, for a high peak, but you see those middle 30 years, the price of gold stayed around 300, 350 for about 30 years. And then what happened in 2008? Unemployment was high, interest rates, uh, mortgages, the car industries were doing bad. Price of gold hit a thousand dollars. Okay, I'm gonna touch it, I'm gonna touch back to that a little bit. All right, everybody thinks there's an overabundance of gold, okay? There is a lot of gold around, but you could take the world's gold and fit it underneath the Eiffel Tower, okay? 40% of the gold in the world is recycled. Constant waste, recycle into pure metal, okay? A lot of, a lot of 40% of the gold is used. And uh, I think people think they hear gold, they think it's mined in South Africa, China has taken over as the number one producer of gold. It took over from South Africa as a top gold about 10 years ago. Supply and demand has a little bit to do with it, but I, I, I feel, and I don't think that even the so-called experts really know why the price of gold it goes up and down, but I'm going to give you what I think for being in the business for a long time and for reading a lot about it. Okay, supply and demand is a little bit, but it really it's driven by investor behavior. And investors think that gold is an inflation hedge as paper money loses value, as more is printed, while the supply of gold is relatively constant. Okay, what, what that means is when that happens, it doesn't really add much to the supply from year to year. Okay, so we can't keep up with the supply when you're printing a lot of paper money. All right, it's driven, I simplify it, it's driven by the strength of the American dollar. Okay, the better the economy, the stabilizer price. The worse the economy, the price of gold goes up. It's, it's a safe haven for people. Like I said, back in 20, 2008, when uh, the economy was not good, I, I'm sure you remember looking at your 401k plans and seeing how bad they were doing at that time, the price of gold went up. People like investing in gold when the economy is not doing well. Now, palladium is a little different, okay? Palladium is more driven by supply and demand than anything else, 
Okay, people think the price of palladium is going to hit three thousand dollars. It's it's almost doubled from last year. Uh, it's it's and it's made up mostly by the increased demand from the car makers because they're trying to get more eco-friendly, right? The increased palladium comes. It's a result from the tighter emissions regulations that kicked in this year. In Europe, 22% increase in car registrations. And what's going on in Europe, a lot of the cars in Europe are still run by diesel engines. And diesel engines aren't very friendly to the environment and they don't use palladium. Diesel engines use platinum. So now more diesel engines are being converted to the to gas engines where there's palladium in every car it, it, it's it's right at the bottom of the catalytic with the exhaust emissions on the cars at the catalytic converters they've been discussing using other metals for palladium because it's been it's been going up so high but i feel the only way they're going to change metals is if they run out of metal to use in the car industry right every year it becomes harder and deeper to mine gold 80% of the world's palladium is used in the auto industry, and the balance is used in the dental industry. More and more palladium is used in the jewelry industry, electronics. Uh, I think now what's happening in the world, palladium's up around $2,000. I think today was 1975. Here in New York, I don't know about where, you, where everybody lives, less and less people are using mass transit, which means more people are using car cars to get to work, more cars on the road. Uh, I mean, I always say when I was in high school, the, uh, everybody had a jalopy, right? Everybody had a car that was 10 or 15 years old. Look around today. I mean, you know, everybody has a new car that's leased for three years, you know, three years, five years old. That's all you see out there. So to sum up the palladium price, the, the car industry does well. The car industry is thriving. They need more palladium. The supply gets lower and lower, drives the price up. So as long as the car industry does well, I feel the palladium price will stay up there. Okay, this is a snapshot of the last five or six years, what the palladium prices and gold prices, and that's an update. That's an updated year to date prices that I put in yesterday. And, uh, when people call me and ask me, Tony, when should I send, I have a jar full of scrap or I have a vacuum bag filled with scrap. When should I send it in? Should I hold it? I, I'm always a big believer. If you fill up a jar or you, you, you need money right now, send it in. Don't hold on to it. Uh, years ago when the price of gold and there was a lot of gold out there, uh, people, mostly dentists, were holding on to, to scrap for retirement. You know, they'll, after 30, 40 years, I'll have a bucket full of teeth and crowns and bridges and partials, and they'll turn it in. But now that the prices are up there, more and more people are sending it in once or twice a year, taking a coin in exchange and putting a coin in the safety deposit box instead of gathering up all that uh, dirty scrap and holding on to it. And the issue with holding on to it is try to get an insurance company to pay you back if scrap is stolen, misplaced damaged or, or whatever. I got a call from a dentist in, in Florida last year and uh, she told me that a person came in, a, a temp came in, and when the temp left, she couldn't find her scrap jar. So she thinks that there was theft involved. And she called me to get an estimate on a scrap. Now I tried to help her uh, because she was a regular customer that sent in once a year. So I tried to, you know, try to do, you know, apples to apples and tried to give her a price uh, that day compared to what the weights are. And I, I gave her a price and an estimation, but the insurance company would not give her money back for an empty jar of scrap. So I always tell people, secure it, keep it safe, turn it in on a regular basis, okay? Uh, take money back, invest it, take coins, all right? I had a, a lab that their basement was damaged in a flood and their vacuum bags got all wet. So I, I, there's no sense to hold on to the scrap. Send it in. And especially now, it's a great revenue stream for in, in the cur current environment. Uh, when uh, everything started closing in March, we received a lot of scrap in in April. I think a lot of people 
looked around and uh, needed some revenue in labs and dental offices and, and sent scrap in. But uh, my main thing with this is, you, you know, if you, if you can't, if you don't have time to, to gather the scrap in and protect it in, in an office, give that chore to somebody in the lab or, or the dental office, okay? Just give them, you know, give them maybe a couple of percent of the scrap return and uh, you'll see how safe it is and they could control it. But don't hold on to the scrap. That's, that's what I'm trying to stress. And you can see the prices jumping up all over the place. And, uh, you know, it's funny because our sales reps say, what's the price of gold? What's the price of gold? Because everybody's always asking for the price of gold. Just keep in mind the palladium price, okay? So because a majority of the times when we get scrap in, we're refining twice as much palladium as gold these days. So the important thing these days is what's the palladium price? Okay. And you know, both prices are, are very high right now. So we know what, we all know what a crown is, right? That's where it starts. Uh, what could dentists collect? Any PFMs, tooth extractions, crown and bridge. Partials are, are I've been getting calls these days uh, about partials more than ever. And if they're white partials, most likely or white or silvery looking partials, most likely they're chrome cobalt, so they're, they're no value. But if you send it in, we'll check it out for you anyway. But the old partials, back when I started, the old 16 karat lingo bars and partials, uh, th those are old ones, and I don't think there's many of those around. But any silver alloy pellets or the powder before it's mixed, with the mercury, we do accept that's 60 or 62% silver. Uh, anything with metal, you know, but what we don't accept is amalgam. Amalgam is mixed with mercury. We're a mercury, mercury free facility in Wartburg, Tennessee. It contaminates metal, it contaminates precious metal. So we can't even have it in our building. If we do get it, we'll ship it right back to you. Any lead foil, x ray film. And sometimes I get into dental instruments, but those are stainless steel. So those are some of the things we do not accept for, for scrap. Okay, we know that x-ray is taken. This is how scrap begins. You're gonna start working. Uh, you know, Mr. Cercelli, we're, we're seeing some metal at the gum line, whatever the reason why we're gonna replace the crown. I know I have to have one replaced in the next month. We pull out the, we pull out the, the tooth or the crown and that's what it looks like. And hopefully you clean it up before you send it in. But sometimes it is not cleaned up when we get it. So we, we, we're safe with it. We keep it. Uh, we work in, in a safe environment. And this stuff gets put right into the, into the furnace. And I'll show you that later. But that's what a, a nice cleaned crown looks like when it comes in. And it's collected in a blue box that we supply. And I'll get into that later. And, you know, people fill up the jar halfway, they'll fill it up all the way, they'll have their own, uh, you know, game plan uh, once a year, twice a year, or w they'll wait till the price goes up, or they'll wait to the summertime for a vacation money or for the end of the year for uh, holiday money. It all depends on uh, what they feel like doing. Okay, this is what scrap looks like from a dentist. Okay, now, the left side really went out of his way or her way to clean that material up. Probably took him a day to knock off all the teeth and the cement and the porcelain and everything else. That is totally unnecessary unless you want to know the exact gross weight when you send it in. But that very, very rarely does that happen. The picture on the right is represents more what a dentist lot looks like. You can see the roots, you see the cement, you see the porcelain already attached. So visualize that picture right there in your mind. And I'm gonna take you through the process and what it looks like when we come up with a dollar figure to pay the customer. Okay, this is what a, a dentist lot looks like. But now I'm gonna to touch on the, the middleman, the person who comes in off the street and offers people, offers dentists money. Okay, we go back to the other slide. I had a little blurb there that said, how could someone accurately measure the amount of, hold on. 
How could someone actu actually measure the amount of gold, platinum, and palladium in that lot by just visualizing it? I mean, I've been in the business for 44 years, and you know, I could probably come up with a good estimate, but it's an estimate, and it's going to be a lowball estimate. And what happens with these middlemen? They'll come in, and you know, I'm sure that some of you guys already use the, this person coming in, and uh, he'll take the scale out. He'll weigh up the yellow, he'll weigh up the white, he'll have a price established for the yellow, a price established for the white. Uh, I mean, you guys know, yellow crowns could range anywhere. I put 35 to 75%, but when I worked with Jelenko, there was an alloy called Topaz that was 20% gold, and it was yellow in color, believe it or not. So it's very difficult to know exactly what is, how much gold is in this material. But the, the, the middleman makes it so convenient. They set up, they weigh it for you, and they pay you on the spot. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of effort on the customer's uh, side. And uh, really, that person who's coming in, the middleman who's coming in, is actually going to 50 dentists a week. And he's gathering it up, and he's sending to you know a company like us a load that looks like that from 20 or 30, 40 different dentists that he's already paid. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna get a full four element assay from us or someone else and get paid 40 to 50, sometimes more than that, than what they paid the dentist, okay? So we're really, especially these days, we're really trying to stress to eliminate that middleman, okay? I know that the big push is that they don't have a sales force, they don't issue 1099s, but they, they're giving you 50% of what you should be getting, okay? Now, we do not issue 1099s either, but in our terms and conditions, it does state that the recipient of any funds is responsible to do any reporting. So it's up to you if you can do any reporting. We do not issue any 1099 forms, okay? So this is what our sales force is fo focusing on, getting this message out, okay? Because there's 190,000 some odd dentists out there, and I've traveled with our reps and co-traveled very often, and 70% of the time, the dentist office is telling me that we give it to some guy or, or we give it to somebody and they don't know if they're refining it or anything. Colzer is still affiliated with Horaeus Refining. We are partnered with Horaeus Refining. We do our own refining, which means a separating of the metals all under one roof. So we're a direct end refiner. We don't send anything out to anyone else to do for us. And it takes a five to seven working days to really complete a four element assay to tell you exactly what's in your lot. And I think all you really want is a fair return, right? You want to be paid for what exists in your scrap. Okay, again, Colzer is an end refiner. We have competitors out there who say they're refiners, who, who partnered with supply houses, supply companies. And when that happens, it's going through two, three, sometimes four different hands before the doctor gets paid. Okay, the middleman is just one hand, but he needs to make 40 or 50% for his you know, wear and tear, gas and T and E and his salary, really. But there are competitors out there who will say they are refiners, that they are not end refiners, they don't do everything under one roof, and there are other fees that are incurred along the way. Okay, now I'm gonna take you on the process of the scrap once it comes in. A picture is taken of every shipment that comes in in case there's any issues a picture of the material and a picture of the weight. That black thin thing up top is a camera. So uh, that's where the picture is taken. We assign it a lot number. If Dr. Smith comes in, we'll see if he has a, an account number with us. If not, we'll assign a, a, an account number for him and then we'll accept the scrap. This is a normal scrap shipment, 1,346 pennyweights. It's a pretty good size one. And now we're ready to process. Now, again, Keep this in mind, this picture, 
because all those, all that non-metal material is going to go away. We, what we do is we take graphite crucibles we use to melt. We add soda, ash, and borax, which we call flux. And we take the material and put it right into the furnace. And what we do is we use an induction furnace, which is very important because uh, some companies use gas furnaces and with the, 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 the melting ranges now with all the metal, the non-precious that's out there right now, you gotta get to 2000 degrees. And sometimes the gas furnaces that fire underneath have trouble getting to 2000 degrees all the way through the pot from top all the way to the bottom. Our induction furnace is electric. It gets up to 3,500 degrees. Palladium's melting rip point is 2,800 degrees. So our induction furnace is electric and it has coils. It's, it sits inside a well. So the coil goes all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom of the cup of the crucible. And it maintains consistent heat from the top all the way to the bottom. And that's very important when you come and pour it. So the dentist slot gets put right into the crucible. As you see, it's in a well. It's over 3000 degrees. Our processor, our melter, stirs it with a carbon rod. And his job is to make sure that the scrap shipment gets into a rolling boil, almost like, a, almost like boiling water, okay? And that means that it's just molten metal in there, all the porcelain, teeth, uh, cement, any stuff that's not metal is disappearing. They know what the gross weight is, so they have the appropriate molds, depending on what the weight is. A normal dentist lot with porcelain and teeth, or that picture that I just showed you, a normal dentist lot loses between 25 and 35% of the gross weight because of the teeth and, por and porcelain that's in there. So now he's pouring it. And when I said a couple of slides ago, that is, that's the important part with the induction furnace. It keeps the metal hot and consistent through top and bottom. So nothing remains in the crucible. We want everything to get out into the mold. And now as soon as the, the, the metal gets poured into the mold, the soda ash and borax that was added knocks off. It, that, it, it, if you remember in the slide earlier, it was white material and it turns into that brownish, gray, greenish looking material on the right side of the slide, which is more like a glassine type of figure. So that just helps the melt go down. And believe it or not, after two, three minutes, that bar is already solid. Obviously we don't, we don't pick it up until it cools off, but that bar solidifies pretty quick when it's in, in exposed to the open air. So now this is what the bar looks like. Okay, now obviously that's a high gold bar. And nowadays there's a lot of high palladium material. That's pretty much what the bars are looking like these days, higher palladium. There is some gold in there. So what happens is the processor or the melter cleans all the flux off the bar and the bar goes back to the buying room where it started. And now they put the net weight into the SAP system. So now we have the gross weight for Dr. Smith. It processed. We bring it back nice and clean. We have the net weight for Dr. Smith. So the next step is, and, and we, we really came up with this about 10 years ago when there was more and more non-precious and nickel contained in the shipments. Uh, what we do now is we x-ray the top of the bar and the bottom of the bar. And this is a step that I hope other companies are doing, and I'm sure they are, but I hope they are because we need to make sure that that bar is homogenous before we drill it, all right? There are times when we do, when, when there's a lot of nickel or chrome, cobalt, because there's a lot of, there's new metals coming out, you know, every year by companies that, that's considered a noble metal and it's 20% platinum or 25% palladium and the balance in chrome cobalt and non-precious material. So nowadays, more than ever, you need to know what you're doing when you're melting that material, okay? So if we put that bar on this x-ray machine and it reads 20% gold on one side and 50% gold on the other side, we will not proceed with that. What we would do 
is or the same as palladium too. Uh, we'll add copper to it, all right? And we'll add copper and just go through the same process, the same practice. We'll x-ray the top, we'll x-ray the bottom to make sure until it gets to within 1% of, of the percentage of gold and palladium. And now this isn't what we pay it according to this x-ray. This x-ray is, is, is a step that we take just to make sure that the bar is homogenous before it's drilled and sent to the lab. When we feel that it's homogenous and we're gonna get a good sample, then we'll drill it and send it to the lab. Now, if we don't do that x-ray step or if some companies don't do that x-ray step, and you drill in a bar that's 20% on one side and 50 on the other side, and you mix up the drill, you're not going to get a good assay. It might benefit you. It might not benefit you. But it's just not the right thing to do, okay? And so we, we drill top and bottom. We take the drill sample, and now it's ready for the assay lab, okay? So it started off with the crowns, bridges, facings, teeth, melted drilled and here we are ready for the assay procedure 0.5 of a gram is used as a sample for assaying on the right hand side that's a hot plate and those beakers have aqua regia and that's hydrochloric and nitric acid now if you took that beaker with aqua regia and a bottle of poland spring water you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two it looks like water you might be saying now, why is it black and gray and brown and purple? Those are all different lots. That's all, that's one dentist, that's a lab, that's one dentist, that's all different samples. And it's boiled on a hot plate and the material is put in and the material gets dissolved in the solution and it stops boiling. And that's when we take it off there. So now we take the solution and now we're ready to assay. And assay is a quantitative determination in which a metal of metals, blah, 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 what it tells you, it's gonna tell you how much precious metal is contained in that sample. And we went to great lengths to make sure it's homogenous and it's gonna represent the weight of your scrap shipment. So that, I'm sorry, the test, the, the test tubes are emptied, I'm sorry, the beakers are emptied into these test tubes and then this tray, gets put in front of the ICP. And the ICP is a very important machine. It's the inductively cupelled plasma emission spectrometer. So that's why we say ISP, ICP, it's a lot easier. It determines the precious metal content by uh, spectral means. Okay, I don't wanna get too technical with it, but that little the metal thing that comes out, it goes into the tube, it takes out a little bit of solution and it spits it out into the, ICP and it prints out the precious metal content. Those four tubes in front with a little bit of solution, that's a known solution. So every five assays, the machine goes in and takes a known solution and recalibrates itself if needed. But we put that tray on at night and I come in in the morning and it's 200 assay results. We could do 200 assay results. And when I said that this machine's very important, back when I started in 76 wow <laughs> a lot of gold was being used uh it wasn't unusual that you had almost every restoration 75 percent gold and four percent palladium we were using the old fire assay method which was slow ex more expensive but really really good on gold results and gold percentages but it, it wavered a little bit because there was a lot of manual uh not guessing, but a lot of manual matching with colors back then with palladium. So we were one of the first companies in 1981 to get an ICP and calibrate it to tell us how much precious metals in that solution. Now, you might hear assays. I mean, people have ICPs that check water levels, you know, for the county, the state. I mean, you could have this machine check anything you want, but we've programmed it and our industry programs it to read precious metal. Okay, so now we get these results from the ICP. Let's focus on the bottom result. That number 63308 is the lot number. 159 is the penny weights because we, we value everything in penny weights and there's 20 penny weights per ounce. And the ounce is troy ounce. It's not avoir 
ounces, which is a scale that you weigh your deli meat or you weigh yourself with. There's a little difference in the weight categories, okay? We use troy ounces, 20 penny weight. So if you go to the bottom sample, those three columns that start with 25.9, 25, 24.2, what the ICP is doing is it's reading three wavelengths for each metal and then averaging it out and carrying it over to the left side where you see AU is 25, AG, which is silver, 10.2, PD is palladium, 36.7, PT is 0.3. And I asked the machine to check for nickel and, and copper these days, just so I have an idea of what some of the other metal is. If I want to know exactly all the other trace metals, I could do an x-ray on it, and the x-ray gives me a lot of other different metals. But the x-ray just isn't as accurate for us to go and pay, but the ICP is great when it comes to the four precious metals. If you look at the sample up top, that one, hit, that one there had 22% nickel in there. So you could see, you know, there's a lot of non-precious out there right now. And so now what we do is we, on our SAP system, we call up lot number 63308, whatever the lot number is. It already has the 159 penny weights was the net weight that was entered in there. And I'm going to put 25% gold, 10.2 silver, and so on. And the system is going to pick up the percentage of metal, multiply it by the net weight, and use the price of the day that the assays go in. So that's what we use for the, to price our material, the day of assay. We, don't, we used to pay on an average price years ago. But when the prices started going crazy all over the place, it just wasn't safe for the company or the customer. So this is, you know, we get the assay if from a dentist lot five to seven days later. So there's not a lot of exposure on the price. And so it'll, it'll give you the total price. And the following day, we get the assay report, which goes with every payment. It gives you the pure metal in penny weight that was recovered and the price we pay subtracting our fees, extend it out and that's the dollar amount that's paid, okay? We pay on all four precious metals, okay? There's some company and do, you know, I always tell people, you know, there's a lot of companies that say they do refining, uh, but educate yourself. There's some companies out there that don't pay you for small, uh, percentages of platinum and some companies that don't even pay you for silver and if you ask them they say oh it's not worth a lot of money but you know what if that company does you know two three thousand settlements every year that money is accumulating that they're putting in their pocket and not giving to the customer okay so we pay if there's a point one of a penny weight platinum recovered i pay you for that point one okay so we pay for all four precious metals we could ac ACH bank wire, give us your bank information and we can wire it right to your bank, which we're doing more and more these days. Uh, a check to the dental practice or to the dentist name or exchange for one ounce gold eagles. And we, uh, I, I hate to say we charge, but we mark up the coins four and a half percent on the price of the day because obviously we don't make the coins or ACEs make the coins. We have to buy them from the bank. And that's what we're being charged. We're just passing that charge over to the customer. Now, if you're, if you're thinking who takes gold coins, and I would say more dentists take gold coins than labs do. Uh, I mean, we do a, a big lab business also. And we do a big dentist business. So a lot of the labs, uh, they rather take a check directly to the company uh, to offset you know, some of their alloy charges that they incur every month and it helps them pay for the alloy, alloy prices. But you know, so there's a group of dentists that take the, the, the one ounce coins and they put it in a safety deposit box and, and, and when they retire, you know, they have 20, 30 nice one ounce coins and it's a lot easier getting rid of those one ounce coins when you retire because you know exactly what they should be worth compared to if you got a bucket filled with crown and bridge, right? Here are our fees. We take 10% off on a gold, platinum, palladium, 15% off on a silver. The average turnaround is seven to 10 days for solids, 14 
14 day, 10 to 14 for grindings. And the 10 to 14 is more geared for labs who send us vacuum bags. Uh, we get rug, big rugs in, uh, suction units. But for a dentist slot, we turn it over about seven working days. We use the London PM fix. Now you might hear that there's a New York price. There's a London AM, there's a London PM. There's a New York rolling price. There's all kinds of prices. We use the London PM fix. And I think that's pretty much an industry standard. Here's the blue box that we have available for the dentist or any customer really, but this is really geared for the dentist. There's a, a collection jar with a plastic bag in there. That's a UPS two day label that's prepaid. And if you use that label, that box is insured for up to $200,000. We ask, do not tell UPS what's in there. Do not take out extra insurance because UPS doesn't pay any more than $100 if a scrap shipment is lost. But we have our own machine, I'm sorry, marine cargo insurance up to $200,000. Knock on wood, haven't had a lost shipment and I can't remember the last time. I don't even want to mention it. So uh, they've been pretty good and it's pretty safe. That's an acknowledgement form right next to it. It's uh, three copies. You put the white copy in the box with your name and all your information. There's a check mark on the bottom if you wanna be called, if you want coins, if you want more boxes, it's all, you can put it all on there and you keep one copy for yourself. That blue box comes in an outer brown box, just like that. It says alloy scrap blue box kit with a product number on it. That's for our inventory purposes. So what you do is you put the jar in there, the paperwork in there, secure it, tape it up real strong, and you could put the UPS label directly on top of that other white label. And we get a lot of boxes in that way. It's safe. Some people like to take the blue box and put it in another container. It, it makes them feel better. So either way, but we, we get a lot like this. It's a thick, sturdy box. So uh, it's, it is safe to send it in that way. But I, I do suggest that if you do do it in your office, I know a lot of dentists have UPS picking up and I've been into offices where I've helped them collect it and leave it for the driver. But what happens sometimes is the driver takes it and without leaving a receipt or anything. So just always take a picture of the label or write down the air bill number just in case. If you need to take it to UPS store, they don't charge you and they will give you a receipt. But uh, a lot of dentist offices have UPS that come in every day. This is an article uh, written by Thomas G. Colby. I don't know if you guys know Dr. G. Colby. He's the uh, editorial director for Dental Town Magazine. And I just wanna tell you a quick story about this. Uh, I was in Tempe traveling. I just got back from my travel. I get to my hotel room and I got a message from Dr. G. Colby's office. Uh, could you send the blue box? We have scrap for you. And I'm like, I take the address down and it's Tempe. I'm like, wait a minute, I am in Tempe. I'm in the area, I'm traveling tomorrow. Could I come and get it? He said, yes, I went there. He gave me a bag of white, bag of yellow. I put it in a UPS box and sent it off like I always do. About a month later, I, I was getting calls from dental offices, said, hey, I saw your article. I'm like thinking to myself, what article? Hey, I saw your article. I'm like, what article? I called marketing. I said, did you guys put a scrap ad and without letting me know? Because I got to approve all that stuff. And they're like, no. So I called the dentist office that called me before. And I said, what article are you talking about that you read? He said, oh, there's a full page ad by Dr. Giacobbe about his experience with the person coming in off the street. And I, I think this is too small for you guys to read, but I'm just going to put it in a nutshell. Dr. Giacobbe had the scrap ready. The, the person coming in off the street offered him $1,500 cash, 15 crisp $100 bills. And the prices were getting a little better. And he was a little skeptical. And he told his assistant, I'm going to call the lab that we deal with. And he called his, the lab that he dealt with. And he said, hey, give Tony a call at, at Horaeus at the time. They do a great job. So he called me. And I didn't even know about this until they were telling me about this article. And we paid him $3,100. So this is what we're talking about in the slides before. He felt funny, he felt $1,500 wasn't enough. We paid him $3,100. We, we made our 10% and we move on, okay? Now, this person 
that is sending that, 50, that paid the $1,500 is going to send that to us. And we would have paid him $3,100 and he would have made $1,600 on the transaction. So this is why I'm saying stop dealing with the middleman. And Dr. Giacobbe is a big advocate of ours now. We use this article as one of our sell sheets with his approval. We had another dentist in, Den in the Denver area that was offered uh, $1,800 and we paid him $4,200. So I, I, I really don't know what's going on out there, but they make it very easy and stress-free, you know? But we are trying to make it the same way. We're supplying the blue box. We're paying for shipping. We have insurance. We have a jar. All you gotta do is send it in and we'll do the rest. Now I wanna take a minute and talk about the partnership we have with Panky. Uh, years ago, we had an idea with Panky and uh, we developed this exclusive partnership where we take our 10% refining fee and we're gonna give back 5% to the foundation, to the Panky Institute. And it started off really, and it's probably like 10 years ago, started off really, really well we got the word out and then it just kind of faded away. And it, now every once in a while we do get some panky doctors sending in. And when I do get the opportunity in my cold travels, I will go in and see the zip code I'm in and I'll go to visit some panky doctors. But when I do get their attention and they do meet with me, they love the program. They love that we give back some of our profit it's got it we're not taking any of your money away we're taking our profit to help the institute out and when dentists know that they're very very good about giving a scrap but we're just trying to get the word out um, and, i mean earlier today i got an email from a dentist that said hey i heard you're doing a webinar tonight uh, send me a blue box i want to uh you know i want to help out with the program like fantastic so this is what i'm hoping the webinar does for you to uh get some more money back to the panky institute and more 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 importantly more money into your pocket and especially these these days it's a great revenue stream additional revenue that everybody could use right now okay our vision is to be a lifetime partner to our customers we're the one of the top refining companies in the world we're privately owned we're proud sponsors of the annual Triple Plus Club Dinner at the Panky uh, Conference every year. You know, I, I personally give out, you know, silver coins, door prizes, and we have a great time. And we appreciate you letting us uh, participate in the meeting every year. And uh, we have a state-of-the-art of facility in Tennessee. We moved there two years ago, so everything's brand new. Our furnaces are sifters are everything is brand new it's uh, 45 minutes north west of knoxville okay and we offer free containers we do all our processing under one roof eliminate the middleman you don't need them we have no accountability charges and i want to take a minute and explain what accountability charges are and i, I don't like i'm not going to name other companies but this other companies that have partnered up with supply companies and through their sales force. So like I said, it goes through three or four different hands before you get paid. And what happens is there's an accountability charge and they're not hiding it on you. It's, it's listed on their terms and conditions, but it's not considered a refining charge. It's an accountability charge. So if you would ask that company, well, what's your refining charge? They'll tell you 10%. But if you read further, their accountability charge is 10% on gold, 20% on palladium, on top of the 10% refining charge. And what that means, accountability means when a, a certain amount of metal is recovered, for instance, if we recover 100 penny weights of gold, I'm gonna pay you 100 penny weights of gold. With a company that has an accountability charge, I'm gonna pay you. I'm sorry, they're gonna pay you 90% of the metal are covered. That's part of their accountability, okay? I just wanna make that clear. So just be careful with that. We have no assay charges. 
like I said, we take our 10% and we, we do everything under one house. And we want to be lifetime partners. I'm talking about Scrappy because I'm the director of refining. But uh, we sell a whole portfolio of dental products. I'm sure a bunch of you are already familiar and probably using Colza products. Uh, we, we, you know, we're very good friends with Lee Brady. I know that she's a very important person in the Panky uh, house right now. And uh, we want you to buy other products, not just scrap. And it starts from scrap. And we get the trust through our scrap. Okay. Now, if you need any boxes or free UPS pickup, just call me, or you could call. You could click on this My Dental 360. That's the refining website I want to take you through right now. And you go up top, click on My Refining, and on here, you could request shipping materials. You could schedule a pickup. We have something called Auto Ship Program, which you could sign up for which uh, you can ask for a blue box every six months, every year, every three months. That's an auto ship program. Uh, every day, right now we're in between prices. So every day you'll see the prices listed here. And if you click on this refining profit calculator, if you are using a different company, uh, uh, you know, that does go through one of the supply houses or any different company, we ask you to come onto this site right here and, and look at their assay report and put in the, 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 the weight, the net weight, the percentage of gold, and what the prices of the, that day was. And we will tell you what we would pay for that same exact shipment. And the majority of the time, it's, it's more than what you would have gotten on that. And you, like I said, you can request there's an acknowledgement form here. So you could get everything off our website. Okay, and today... They received. For instance, if I get a, 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 a scrap shipment from one of the Panky doctors that were on a webinar today where they write Panky AG on the assay, on the acknowledgement form, I'll give four silver coins. So for every $500, I'll give a, a, a silver eagle. Okay, I, that's, uh, that's the entire process. Hopefully I let you educate a little bit. It's good to see how, you know, a lot of people just send their scrap in and they get a check and you know we do tours at the building. If you're ever in the Knoxville area, we'll gladly take you for a tour. Uh, a lot of people love to see the process because they really have no idea, you know, how how we come up with the dollar figure. So I hope that hope that helped clear that up for you. And uh, we have a couple of I think we have a couple of minutes for questions, right? Yeah, yeah, Tony. Thank you so much. That really helped me just to even see the process of what happens because I have been sending. Um, scrap metal to you guys for a while. And um, I, we so appreciate your relationship with the Institute. We do have a question now, obviously coming from internationally, like from Canada or from some other organization, that blue box still has a prepaid address and shipping label and all that, right? That's a great question. All right. The blue box does go to Canada, but okay. whenever we get, a, we get a request for a blue box with Canada, Paperwork inside is all domestic shipping. So it, the, the UPS label can't be used for Canada. We send a Canadian folder, which has an international air bill and it has customs papers that need to fill out. And we have like a, a, an instruction uh, by fold that makes it pretty easy to fill out all the paperwork. But okay. yeah, you can't, you can't use the air bill uh, on, in a blue box that's domestic paperwork. Okay. Okay, but you have a way around that. Yes, we send out okay. a Canadian Canadian folder. Okay, awesome. And there was another question about um, how many refiners are there? Well, it depends on who you talk to. You know, okay. uh, the, 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 we, we, Hooray is obviously is a refiner, and then there's Johnson and Matthew. There's, there's, 
you know, I don't know exactly how much, how many end refiners are there are out there, but I know that there's hundreds of companies that say they are, you know? Okay. So uh, just, you know, be careful with that. There aren't a lot of end refiners. And when I mean end refiners is what we do is we melt down your material. We pay you for your material for the precious metal that's contained. And then now we own the material. So now we batch it up and we refine it, which means, after about six to eight weeks, we actually separate the pure gold, the pure palladium, all into its pure state. And then it's put out into whatever industry needs palladium, silver, or gold. So that's six to eight weeks later. Customers can't wait for six to eight weeks. So we, you know, a lot of companies, well, most companies pay you within one or two weeks. But while we're on that subject, if you don't have a company that does your refining that you're partnered with, like we are with Horaeus. Now say one of those, one of the other smaller companies have to batch up all the material now that they own. And now they have to send it to a refiner because that's how they make their money. Right. So now the refiner is right. going to take treatment charge. They're going to take a whole, you know, a whole bunch of other charges that don't come close to the charges that we get charged from our partner in Horaeus. Right. And I'll be honest, I, one of the things I appreciate, I, I love the company, I use it for a lot of different products. Um, what's also great is I've had the middleman, you know, interrupt my day, be a little pushy, be a little bit challenging to deal with sometimes. And so it's, it's great. It's, you guys are, um, are always very professional and I appreciate that. I do I have, one, I have one sure. more question. So life is crazy right now we're in yeah. COVID, we've got riots we've got protests we've got all kinds of things going on but pouring, pouring rain out right now out here. Uh, <laughs> where do you see the price of, of gold and other precious metals heading for the short and long term you know i went i always go back to the first couple of slides and all the so-called experts don't even know i mean another thing i failed to say Kitco is a great website, K-I-T-C-O, Kitco. Okay. Go, when you got time, go on it. Anybody go on it. They have great articles from the so-called experts and they talk about futures and history. You could go and look at charts and datas. You can look at the current prices. But my feeling is if the car industry continues to do very, very well and more and more cars are going away from diesel, because of the, the eco-friendliness that people are going toward. And everybody doesn't run and buy an electric car because I, if you buy an electric car, you, you, you're not using any palladium. If all those things stay like that, I think palladium is going to stay around $2,000, you know? And, oh. and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was like 1975 today. So wow. I, I think it's going to be 2000 stay around too. And the price of gold, you know, <laughs> I, again, the so-called experts, and I think I know a little bit about it. The last three months have been very challenging, right? Unemployment skyrocketing, people out of work, you know, and, and of course the price of gold went up, right? So now when everything starts getting back to normal, it should settle down a little bit, but I don't think the price of gold will ever go under a thousand dollars again. And, wow. and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I've been around, I guess, too long because the price of gold, for 30 years was around 250, 280, and palladium was about 80 or 90 dollars. Who would have thought that they would be where they are now? And you know, you you go and ask labs for scrap, and you're hearing we don't use that much metal anymore. We're using more zirconia, metal-free material. But what's funny is they're sending less scrap in now, and they're getting twice as much money as they did when they were using 80 percent metal because of the price difference. Right. Right. One more question. It did sure. pop up. It, can you put in like scrap jewelry or unwanted things like that in the mix of this? We get calls from offices. Some of the staff want to send in jewelry. Yes, we do. We take jewelry also. But okay. uh, if you want it to be paid separately, you know, send it in separate. If you put it in with your crown and bridge, we're just going to melt it with the crown and bridge and we're going to get the exact precious metal content out of there it's not a problem but yes we do get we take jewelry also and 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 we get calls from the front office person and says <clears throat> excuse me i went to the kiosk in a mall and they offered me 12 dollars a penny weight for that i'm like 
well, today I'd pay you 1950 for that. She's like, oh my God. Yes, they, they you know, they, that, that's just like a middleman, that kiosk and, you know, and, and the, the cash for gold places, you know, back in 08 when everything was not good, everybody was looking for gold wherever they could find it and they didn't care, it, you know, and, and what happened back then was the Obama administration really, you know, cracked down on refiners and we're a reputable company, and so is a lot of companies in our industry. And they, he wanted the government want to know where did you get this scrap from. So that's why in a couple of slides earlier I said we can make a check out to the dentist or the dentist practice, okay? Because back then everybody was, you know, they didn't care where the where the gold came from, and it wasn't a good thing back then.